What would happen if we had a final monster matchup? Vampire versus werewolf. The vampire has to leave. Use the catapult to get our tan on. <laughs> and harness the power of water. He's taking off. It's about to get wet and wild. Ali is crazy and cool at the same time. He thinks of stuff you'd never really come up with. Victorious! I describe Jackson as funny, wild, and totally nuts. CJ is the ultimate in cool. He pushes everything to his limit, whereas I just want to see stuff explode. What's up with this vampire versus werewolf beef? It never ends. It is a classic rivalry, and I don't think it'll ever end. This needs to end once and for all so we can get on with our lives. Dude, what would happen if a vampire and a werewolf had a bite off? So we're here today to settle the age-old rivalry between vampires and werewolves. Now, both of these guys are notoriously known for having the most awesome teeth in the entire monster industry. So what better way to test these teeth than to have a good old-fashioned bite off with a bobbing for apples competition? Dude, what would happen if a werewolf and a vampire had a bite off? Ah, ah, ah. Is he hurt? Here's how it's gonna go down. Hmm. I'm going to feed 10 pies to you that have whole apples hidden underneath a thick layer of whipped cream via this conveyor belt. And the one that can pull out the most apples out of 10 with their teeth is the winner. Your job is to use your teeth to try and bob as many apples off the pies that I give you as possible. I will call out your score each time you successfully pull an apple from the pie. Ali, why do you think your fangs will be superior in this bite off? I only need two fangs. They're big, long, and sharp. Jackson, ah! why do you feel that your canine teeth will allow you to grab the most out of the 10 apples that I give you? Mine are bigger, better, and more improved than his. And I have two sets of them, AKA four of them. It's fangs versus canine teeth to see which monster has the best bite. First up, Werewolf Jackson. Okay, Jackson got the first apple. That's one. Two. You'll have to go faster than that. Three. Four. That's five. <laughs> ha, he missed one. And six. You better bite faster. Seven. Eight. Ah! Oh! <laughs> he got it. on lock. There's no way that Ollie can get 10 apples with his puny vampire fans. The hairy dog gets nine. Count vampire Ollie will get perfect 10. Here we go. Ah! One. One. Number two. Three. Four. Five. And six. This is not easy. Those pies are fast like bats, you know? <laughs> Ow! Eight, time! Two! No! Pretty sure I missed two apples and the wolf only missed one. Not good. I need some blood. Ali? Don't say it. You I know. got... I know. Eight out of ten apples, so that makes... Jack in the winner! Dude, to see which creature of the night gets more props, we should focus on what really makes a monster effective. Driving record. Hairstyle. No, their attacking skills. What kind of monster are you if you can't catch your own prey? We're here today to find out who has the best technique to hone in on their prey and attack. We have this giant Velcro wheel with Jackson's face on it. Who is our prey? To catch him, we'll be wearing suits made of sticky strips to not only leap onto, but to stick to him. If we don't stick onto the wheel, we will fall into this sticky tub of slop. 
Now I'm gonna get up on this trapeze right here, swing, and then fly towards Jackson like a vampire. While Ali is gonna go classic wolf pounce and bounce off a trampoline for his land attack. Whoever can stick closest to Jackson is the winner. Dude, what would happen if werewolf leaping battled vampire flying? Hey guys, I'm a housefly. What? And I don't know about the whole werewolf vampire thing. All I know is I'm about to show both you guys how to fly and land. What I'm gonna do is hop up on that crane, use your little swing contraption, and then dismount right onto that handsome, wonderful eyebrowed prey. I don't care if Jackson Bizarro, non-monster housefly wants to compete. We all know vampires are taking this. First up, Werewolf Ali. All right, let's see what you got. Here we go. Wolf oh, Here we go, here we go. Oh, oh, dude. OK, I had a good leap. My right paw was going right towards Jackson, but my body angle was wrong, and I bounced right back off. I'm humiliated. It's my turn. Let's do it. Pay attention, guys, because I'm going to be flying as soon as the face is dead center. You caught! Dude, you, you caught, caught me! I executed my plan almost perfectly. I timed out the rotation of my prey, flew with vampire precision, and almost landed right on his neck. And then, of course, I fell off. Oh! Let me show you guys how flies rob this. CJ, your timing was a little off. But us house flies, all we have is time. Watch and learn. Go! There he goes! Oh! Coming up, it's vampire versus beast in a race to the finish. The dog is right on his tail! And! A catapult makes a big splash. Dude! And water gives us a boost. It's a battle to see who can stick it and capture their prey. A vampire, a werewolf, or a housefly. Yes, a housefly. Go! There he goes! He's stuck! Oh, oh, we sorely underestimated the housefly. I hate to say it, but he nailed it. <laughs> I get it. What? Jackson, I gotta give you props, man. But uh, you were not a part of this competition to begin with, right. so I'm gonna need you to go back to your house. Those on by. When it comes to being a monster, if you're not fast, you're done. Yeah, what's the point if you're too slow to catch your own prey? Werewolves always catch their prey. Why? Because they have four paws. Two legs are all a vampire needs. A werewolf will never outrun a vampire. I got it! We're gonna have a vampire and werewolf race. To the racetrack! Dude, what would happen if a vampire raced a werewolf? This is Honeycomb Jackson reporting with you guys for DUDE News. Today we will find out who is faster. Werewolves or vampires in an epic two monster relay race. Here is our team werewolf. This is CJ the werewolf, partnered with the fastest and closest cousin to a werewolf, a racing greyhound. And here is Ollie, the really, really old vampire. And his racing partner, a world class sprinter who's also down with vampires. So this is how it's gonna go down. First off, CJ and Ollie will race the first 100 yards of the 200 yard race. They will start off in a straightaway and then make one left turn where Ollie will hand off the baton and CJ will tag his Greyhound racing partner. They will finish off the race by running the final 100 yard dash. This is the final challenge to see who is the ultimate creature of the two, vampires or werewolves. I'm a really fast vampire and my vampire relay teammate is a world class level sprinter. How can we not win this? Why are we gonna win? Well, let's see, maybe it could be because my partner is a, uh, what do you call it? Oh yeah, a greyhound. On your marks. Get set. Go! Get it, get it, get it, get it. CJ's off to a jackrabbit start, but Vampire Ali's keeping up. Ali's making his move on the inside. CJ's fast, but burns out quick sometimes. Plus, I've been running track since I was a tiny bloodsucker. Ollie has a head start right now. It looks like he's just passing it off to his teammate, Vampire Runner. CJ has reached 
watched his greyhound and tagged him in. Now it's on for the final 50 yards. There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go! We have a really good lead. All we have to do is hold off the Greyhound for 100 yards, and we are the Monster Speed Kings. Dude, Ollie got a major lead on me in the turn. Now it's up to the Greyhound to catch and beat the Vampire Sprinter. Oh, this dog is catching up. The dog is right on his tail. Go, go! That Greyhound is right on the Sprinter's heels, dude. He's catching up. This is going to be close. in my entire human existence. It looks like it's gonna be a photo finish. We did it! Vampires win! Us bloodsuckers were the faster monsters today. Dude, what would happen if a werewolf and a vampire had a bite off? <sighs> and dude, what would happen if werewolf leaping battled vampire flying? There he goes! A house fly? Really? And dude, what would happen if a vampire raced a werewolf? That was the closest race I've ever seen! Vampires by a fang. Guys, I was watching this Viking movie last night, and it totally reinforced my life motto. Catapults are awesome. <laughs> Catapults are awesome, but no one uses them anymore. Feel me up. I bet that we could rock a catapult nowadays and use it to better our lives in any situation. Hanging out with your friends at the park is awesome, but putting on sunscreen is not. That's why the lab dudes have built this catapult. This catapult is gonna give CJ Jackson and I an instant coat. Dude, what would happen if we tried to catapult suntan lotion? We are standing in front of a giant catapult and it's filled with 20 gallons of suntan lotion so that we can get our lotion on in an instant. I'm standing sideways so I can get both frontal and backwards coverage. CJ, why are you sitting down? Because I want the full head to toe suntan lotioning. Understandable. And I'm gonna do a muscle pose. Let the application process begin! It's one thing to face a catapult. It's another thing to face a catapult full of suntan lotion and not know when it's gonna launch. It's a bit nerve wracking. Right before the catapult came at me, I was like, I don't know if I wanna apply all that sunscreen. But then guess what? Now I don't need to apply any sunscreen for a whole month. Thank you, catapult. Dude. What would happen if we tried to catapult suntan lotion? <laughs> Kinda gross. So guys, I was surfing yesterday and I had a thought. If water is strong enough for us to surf on, then what would happen if we harnessed the power of water to lift us straight up? We're about to use water pressure to make my Mini Ollie fly into the air like a rocket. Mini Ollie will have a two liter water canister filled with water attached to his back. We're gonna pump as much air as we can to fit into that canister until it blasts off like a rocket. How high will it go? We're about to find out. Dude, what would happen if we try to launch a water rocket? So what do we think's gonna happen? Based on the amount of water in here, dude, this guy's gonna go up like 50 feet. I'm predicting that Mini Ollie will travel at five feet per second, and it should take around 10 seconds before the bottle runs out of water pressure. That makes 50 feet. Jackson, why do you have Mini Jackson? More support. I think Mini Ollie will be projected in the air and fly maybe like two feet, but then fly right into the ground quickly. Are we ready for takeoff, gentlemen? Yep. yep. Start pumping. Dude, I feel the pressure almost immediately. Keep going, keep pumping. I'm only on with all my might. The water pressure in the bottle is getting so powerful that it's hard for me to hold the air nozzle in place. The air is pumping in, the water's spraying out. Dude, this thing's about to blow. We're here to see if we can make Mini Ollie fly using water pressure. Jackson is holding the puppet with the water bottle on its back while I pump as much air as I can into it before it pops out of Jackson's hand. 
Keep going. Tell me when to let go. Obviously might not have reached my predicted 50 feet, but it was still fun seeing him flying around using water power. Nice job, Mini Ali. Guys, if we're talking lifting things with water, we need to lift something way bigger than a mini dude. Yeah, we need way more lift power and way more controlled pressure so we can control the flight. Well, what about a water pressure jetpack to launch a bigger dude straight up? <laughs> I have three words, my wild haired friend. Tell them to me. Ready for takeoff. Dude. What would happen if we tried to fly with a water jetpack? To make a dude fly with a jetpack, the lab dudes have hooked up our dummy dude, Kurt, to a water truck, which will be sending 500 pounds of water pressure through a hose hanging from a crane attached to his back, all to see if we can make a dude fly with water power, which of course he will. Now we're trying to make this guy lift off and fly, but you guys are forgetting one thing. What? There's five. 100 pounds of pressure coming out of that hose. It's more than enough. Dude, it's gonna be so unpredictable. Like, yeah, he's gonna get off the ground, but he's just gonna be flapping and flailing all over the place like a fish out of water. And that's not flying. I think you're onto something. I mean, he's gonna lift off, but I think he's gonna choose one direction and just spin around like a tetherball. This is gonna be dope. You guys ready? I'm excited. Let's do it. Time to take flight. You guys ready to get it started? Oh, yeah. Time to give flight to this man. Bless him. He's flying off the ground. Now for more water pressure to get him to go even higher. Oh, He's taking off! He's taking off! Oh, yes, he's looking a little rocky, but he's taking flight. Now for more water pressure. Get up there! Get up! It's time for 500 pounds! Wait a minute, what's he doing? Dude, he's out of control! He's going everywhere! Hold in! I was right, Kurt is going crazy. We hooked you up with the power of flight and you get us wet? Not cool, Kurt. This is inappropriate. Yes! Kurt has lost all control. Time to ground this dummy. Dude, you were the man. You flew. We were right. We just made a dummy fly with a water rocket. That was awesome. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. You were my hero, Kurt. Guys, flying with the water jetpack is sick. Yeah. yeah. But not as controlled as it should be. We need to find a way to go straight up and cruise. All right, we like to cruise in Jackson's car, right? right? Right. So what if we use water pressure to get your car off the ground and into the air? It could be like cruising on a big blast of water, like a <laughs> geyser. My car needs a good wash anyways. Let's go. Dude, what would happen if we tried to fly a car with water pressure? Jackson? Yes. Please tell us why your car looks so amazing. I had the lab dudes set up an awesome cage underneath, which has six hoses running off of three huge water trucks attached to the bottom that are pointing straight down, which in total will be releasing 3,000 pounds of synchronized water pressure. Now, Jackson, if all of our calculations are correct and we're able to get this car high enough into the air, you just might be able to get up close and personal with Lola. I told you about Lola? You definitely told me about Lola. Lola! Yeah. And Lola has a love letter for you. Oh, here, let me read it. No, 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 no. Stay no. Not yet, no, not let me yet. Just read it. She's gonna be suspended 30 feet in the air. So once this water pressure gets you and your car airborne, it's gonna be your job to try and get that Bye -bye. note. Lola, no! But she's gonna be that high? Yeah. Today will be a double success. We'll prove that we can lift a car with me in it with water pressure, and it will go 30 feet so I can grab that love letter. All right, guys, turn these hoses up high and make me fly. All right, All right. man. Since Jackson will be in the car when we try to lift it, the lab dudes have hooked them up with safety wires. They've also hooked up wires to the car to stabilize it so it doesn't go crazy when the water hits it, leaving only the water pressure to do all the lifting. so much water onto the ground and nothing was happening until the lab dudes turned up the pressure. Oh, no way. Dude, I can't believe that this is actually working. Those jet hoses have some serious power in them.
500 pounds of pressure, but it's not enough. We've got to max out these hoses to get me and the car high enough to grab the lead. 100 percent! 100 percent! Give it all 3,000 pounds! Oh, oh, the water! Five! Five! You're going to get it! You're going to get it! No! He's so close! Oh, no! pounds of water pressure to lift 2,000 pounds of car, and I got a love letter out of it. That was awesome. That was amazing. I actually flew in a car with water. And on top of that, I got the love letter, dude. What does it say? Yeah, what does it say? Come on. Dear Jackson, could you tell CJ that I think he's cute? Sincerely, Lola. <laughs> Thank you very much. Dude, what would happen if we try to launch a water rocket? Ah! <laughs> Mini Ali gets about two feet. And dude, what would happen if we tried to fly with a water jetpack? He's taking off! A wild ride. And dude, what would happen if we tried to fly a car with water pressure? Water pressure! Get the there! Car gets a boost. So today we learned that vampires and werewolves will always be neck and neck. That was the closest race I've ever seen! That a catapult is always handy. And that water power can be a force for love. Right, right, 